hello everybody. My background is basically computer science. I've been doing research on reproducibility, but data management is a very close thing to this. So that's why how I ended up uh, working at the Research Data Alliance, which is an international body that brings people who want to solve problems related to data and data management. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the future, about how we can change the current practices and make everything easier. I have, a f I have one question at the beginning. Who is hungry? <laughs> ah, not that bad, because here you can see the progress bar and it shows you how far it is to the sandwiches or actually how close it is. Uh, so all of us know that data measurement plans is, are not perfect and they are basically manually created text documents and people consider them as bureaucracy. People don't like to fill them out. People don't have enough knowledge. It's usually the burden of uh, put on the researchers. They have to come up with some text before the proposal submission or, or very early in the project. So the data provided is very vague and usually not uh, actually up to date. So they were supposed to be living in documents, but data management plans are usually not living. Uh, there are tools that help us create DMPs, so we have things like DM, oh, sorry, like DMP online to create DMPs, uh, registry of, date of uh, open data repositories, we have uh, uh, policy selector <laughs> tools, we have finally DOIs for giving it to the data. So we have all these things, but usually researchers are asked the same questions all over like again. Please provide me your org ID, please provide me your first name, and they often don't know which tool to use and what is the scope of the tool. And finally, when they write something in the tool, uh, they, the things they describe affect also other stakeholders. So for example, they say, I will, I will create two terabytes of data and I will put it to a certain repository. But the person who is accepting this submission have no idea about this, cannot prepare to take, to reserve the space. Maybe even the content type is not suitable for the repository. So we believe that the problem is that the stakeholders are not, all the stakeholders are not involved in the process of writing DMPs and managing the data. Here you can see a big list of people who could provide information on DMPs and people who could also read the information from DMPs. And we believe that the, uh, the timing has to be right and the flow of information has to be right. If, that, if this is ensured, if the various stakeholders can provide expert expertise and then can read the information out of a DMP, then we can improve the whole situation. Let us analyze a very simple uh, workflow. You can see at the top uh, a researcher and on the other side um, the other stakeholders. And this is a very simple uh, workflow when a researcher is creating a DMP in the planning phase. And usually what they do, they, they, they start by creating an initial, initial plan and we could actually facilitate it by providing uh, infrastructures that, that is an infrastructure that imports automatically data from existing sources. So in this case, when you start a DMP, you could connect to an employee database of the university and get, get all the information about your affiliation, email address, faculty and so on automatically. Then the researcher would have to specify type and size of the data, let's say, as a very, as a very simple thing. And based on that, we can calculate the cost using a very simple cost model. So you could say for the given amount of data and type of data, this would cost you this money to keep it at our infrastructure. We can book the infrastructure for you. So for example, we can send a notification to the repository saying this person will commit two terabytes of data within the next two years. Please make sure you have the storage and please plan it into your budget. Finally, we can recommend the license. We can use the default license of the university or suggest a license based on the, con on the content type. And of course, there has to be a review step in which the people can review because the, 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 the described workflow may work for 80% of the cases which are simple and there will be still the special cases when we have to uh, review what we are doing. And the, the last step of the workflow would be to submit the information to the, to, the, to the funder, but not as an attachment as a PDF in an email, but simply clicking a button submit, and then there is a, due, due to the integration of the infrastructure, the funder would receive the information about the planned uh, research. So we can change a lot by integrating infrastructure, by providing services, 
and connecting stakeholders. Uh, this can be done using the machine actionable DMPs, which will be the living documents. And uh, to do that, uh, we would need to develop a schema that looks more or less like this. So go away from the written textual documents, but go more into the uh, information modeling. And to do that, we would need also two other components, which would be the well-defined uh, workflows and system. So we need to know who is requesting what and when, and then we can put this information in the model and share the information seamlessly between the stakeholders. Here's another example of what would be possible if we had all this information in one place in a structured way. So imagine you have a researcher who is trying to find uh, a similar project in his area. Right now it's a text search using Google. And if we could uh, make some faceted, faceted search like please provide me projects that use this kind of data from this data source and publish it using this license. It would be much easier to find what others are doing. On the other hand, from the machine actionable data measurement plan, we could provide information to the repository so that they would know what kind of uh, embargo period we, they should set for the data and uh, what is the license to be published. And then the repository could communicate with a funder confirming that the actions described in the data measurement plan actually happened. So they would provide a list of DOIs for the object submitted by the researcher without the necessity of researcher talking to the funder directly. So we can automate plenty of these things by providing a common model, common workflow, and integrating systems. Uh, this is not just a vision. We are already working on that. I'm the chair of the RDA DMP Common uh, Standards Working Group. We are actually now uh, uh, doing a consultation. So if you go to the GitHub, we are collecting user stories in which different stakeholders describe their need for information. So you can review the existing user stories. You can write your own user stories. And based on that, we will come up with few uh, standard workflows that we will try to automate uh, using all, uh, doing it jointly. And we cooperate with Digital Curation Center in Great Britain that is providing one of the tools for the MPs with with uh, California and also other tool providers from uh, Germany. And that's basically it. So in my presentation, I told you about the problems with DMPs. I suggested that we should think about automating stuff and connecting uh, people. And I hope we can all work jointly on that topic. Thank you very much. So thank you very much indeed for a really interesting presentation, Thomas. Um, are there any questions? Uh, so how much can you do to convince the different stakeholders to adopt these standards at some point? Because I've seen uh, the Swiss National Science Foundation built their own system, and they were not very open to uh, sort of get input from, from others. So I was a bit disappointed about this. Uh, do, you, do you have good contacts with, with uh, everybody that actually requires DMPs and, and who are building their own uh, template? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, this is the strength of, of Research Data Alliance, that we have people also from the US. We have the DMP tool providers. DMP tool is one of the default tools used for creating DMP in the, in the US, and they have contacts to NSF, because NSF is also suggesting tools you should use when uh, creating a data management plan. So this is the way we, we contact them. But we have also the repository guys. And you know, at the current stage, we don't have people from the funders working directly with us, but to my best knowledge, they are looking on what's going to happen. Any other questions before we go? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, quickly. Does that not discriminate against repositories which are not connected to your... Well, it might also be a good thing because it sets some standards, but at the same time, is that not some sort of problem there. Yes, this is, this is, this is a challenge. So um, what we are describing here is that uh, we need this integration and uh, we need a way to describe what the repository is able to accept, what are the policies, what kind of content types you can have. So we need uh, some kind of a common description language for repositories. So if your repository doesn't follow a standard, then we won't be able to automatically find it. But we always want to implement these things step by step. So if we are able to show in three pilots that for these repositories it works and it e really makes it easier for uh, repositories because the ingest process can be shortened because people learn about repositories earlier, 
then we hope they will adopt the common uh, description, common standard for repositories. Same problem is for cost models. We have seen lots of uh, research on cost models, but we don't have any perfect cost model now. So it's not that we have a service and it works. So we are following, uh, we are focusing on our flow and showing what are the extension points where we would need information and we, where we would need further development. 